Now, it is often said that if you give a man a fish, you'll feed him for a day. But if you teach him how to fish, you'll feed him forever. These words have been exemplified by a group of refugees who have defied the odds, stacked heavily against them, and risen above adversity to create thriving businesses, tapping into the 7 billion shilling economy at the Kakuma camp and paving the way for brighter, more empowered futures. We get more from our very own Mary Muwaki. Refugees have relied on humanitarian aid as their only way of survival. However, there has been a paradigm shift and remarkable transformation is taking place. We shine the spotlight on the inspiring stories of resilience. We bring you a story of refugees who have defied the odds and created thriving businesses. This street in Camp 3 inside the Kakuma refugee camp hosts a vibrant marketplace where refugees have established a wide array of businesses ranging from small food stalls to clothing boutiques. In addition to that, the businesses are not just scraping by, they are thriving. When we catch up with Justin Arike, he is busy at work in his shop. He runs a well-stocked tailoring shop as well as a training school on the side where he equips fellow refugees with tailoring skills. Arike, who is a refugee from South Sudan, fled from his country over 20 years ago and arrived in Kenya with nothing but the clothes on his back. The inter-tribal wars between the Dinka and Nuer people of South Sudan had made the country uninhabitable for him and his family. On arrival in Kenya, he was processed and placed at the Kakuma refugee camp, where to his dismay, the same hostility he was fleeing from caught up with him. Life inside the refugee camp was unbearable for Rike. He says even though the UNHCR was supportive of the refugees, the numbers were simply too high, often pitting the refugees against each other in the constant scramble for the limited resources. Driven by a desire to provide his then young family with a better life than the one they had left behind in his native country, he saved the money the UN gave them for food and came up with 3,500 Kenyan shillings, which he used to start his business. He has started me at food for work. In Kakuma town away from the refugee camp at Rama's Beauty Parlor, the establishment is packed with customers. Being a Saturday, business is booming. The proprietor, Ramadan Mugambo, is a refugee from Congo and is also a beneficiary of the Kakuma Kalobe Challenge Fund. He fled his war-torn country in 2014 when he was just 17 years old. <laughs> Mugambo says even though he had lost everything in his own country, he knew he couldn't allow himself to wallow in pity. He was determined to make something of himself in this country that had graciously opened its door to him. He trained as an apprentice in Lodwa for the better part of the year, eager to learn anything and everything he could to get a solid footing in the beauty industry. After a year, he returned to Kakuma and rented a small space where he started a small beauty and cosmetics business. 
Kwa kwa soko mpaka kuja shida shida ikabidi nihame nikahamia hapa hapo after hapo hapo hapa maisha imekuwa ngumu kidogo kwa sababu watu wamekuwa bado wajajua stressions watu wamekuwa bado wajajua mahali kwenye nimehamia kwa wili kwa tumekuwa tujajiri watu wengi a study conducted by the international finance corporation titled kakuma as the marketplace shows that over 56 million dollars or the equivalent of 7.7 billion shillings are pumped into the Kakuma economy annually providing a huge potential to transform the Kakuma refugee camp into a vibrant marketplace that can promote self-reliance for its inhabitants. It is this report that provided a backdrop for the Africa Enterprise Challenge Fund to take a chance and invest on the refugee community in Kakuma. They've already suffered so much of trauma, but we should not see them just in the context of trauma. We see them from what is it that lies beneath them and can be unlocked so that they have, you know, uh, income and they really realize uh, the dreams that they have. The additional capital from AECF through the Kakuma Kalobe Challenge Fund was a shot in the arm for Justin and Ramadan, who received 2.5 million and 1.5 million shillings, respectively. With a grant of 2.5 million shillings, Justin's tailoring business expanded from just a tiny shop in the corner of the street to a thriving wholesale business and tailoring school with four employees, while Rama's Beauty Paler is a thriving enterprise, employing 15 people, half of them refugees, and making a cool 300,000 shillings a month. <laughs> The IFC study shows that refugees here earn about one third less than those in the town. It is these gaps that private sector investors and partners seek to close by providing financial services and business support services to empower refugee entrepreneurs. Refugees do not just require food. Uh, and temporary shelter. It is to say, how do we provide patient capital to private sector enterprises? Th then we can have demonstration effect that actually this is an economy that really does work and there is opportunity for private sector to um, make, you know, impact. In the face of great adversity, Kakuma refugees have found strength to not only rebuild their shattered lives, but also create thriving businesses that lend hope to fellow refugees as they find their footing in refugee camps. Mary Moki, Citizen TV.